All right. Well, thank you again for doing this this evening, Lauren. I appreciate it. Anytime. Um, first, can you tell us a little bit about your topic and how you decided upon that topic? Sure. Um, well, I came into the class and I was in between two topics, uh, technology and response and intervention. So I decided to go talk to my mentor at the time, who was my internship mentor. He is also the vice principal at the school. And um, he basically urged me to go towards response to intervention. Um, our school currently is getting rid of leveling next year and we're going into an intervention process. And he thought that it might be a key way to get the inter inter intervention process rolling, um, to do some research about it and find out more about it and then perhaps actually start getting trial runs of it. So um, uh, my basically my, my two research questions that I came into were how do tier two interventions, how are they tier two interventions implemented in the high school mathematics setting, but also what are students' perceptions of interventions at the high school mathematics, in a high school mathematics classroom. Okay. Um, once you decided upon your topic, how did you go about starting your literature review? So that was overwhelming. <laughs> um, we had a class where we went to the library um, and um, the library in there was extremely helpful, um, which made it a lot easier. Um, but I went into the ERIC database and I typed in response to intervention and got 1,459 items. Um, very overwhelming, a lot of things. How was I going to sort through this? So instead, I modified my search and I made it so I could see the last 15 years from 2000 to 2015. That brought it to 1,266 items, still way too many. So um, I knew I was interested in math and in the secondary setting, that narrowed it down to about 50 items. And then I knew I was in a more manageable situation. Um, once I got those, I started finding ones that I sorted through to figure out which were most relevant to my research questions and went about it from there. Um, I think I printed about 20 documents and started reading on an airplane one day. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so now that you're in, I guess, roughly the middle of this process, you're six months into, in theory, a 12-month process, um, what's something you wish you had known about uh, when you first started that you think would have really helped you? Um, well, when we, when I was in 689, we, we did something similar to this process where we had a student basically come and talk to us about their process. And I think one, one thing that she said that was really helpful was when you are saving all your articles that you're using, save them by author. It is extremely helpful when going back and trying to find the articles instead of saving them by title. So that's one recommendation I would give you. Um, secondly, when you're reading each of the research articles that you found, after you read them, at the top of the article, write a sentence or a word or a few words about, you know, what were the main things that you're gaining from this article. So that way, when you go back, you don't have to skim through the whole thing again. You can get a general idea. Um, that will also help when you make the annotated bibliography matrix, which was probably the most useful thing I did in 689. Um, it was a wrinkled mess by the end of the course. Um, I... Um, for example, I had one that was, so I, I put the authors on the, on the left-hand side and the topics on the top. And uh, let's say one of the topics was ongoing assessment. Um, when I was writing the literature review and I wanted to go into the ongoing assessment, I already knew what articles talked about ongoing assessment and I didn't have to sort through all of them again. So um, the annotated bibliography matrix as long as it did take me, it was fully worth the time because it saved me so much time in the future. Um, so definitely take your time doing it and, and go through your articles and, and make a good one for yourself. Okay. Following up on that, um, you know, once you had sort of all that material and you had, um, you know, gone through all of those articles and stuff like that, um, what's some advice you would provide to folks as they're starting their literature review? So, going from sort of that consuming the research to actually starting to write it up? Um, I, it would actually be to talk to you. <laughs> Email you often. Um, you are, uh, uh, Dr. Barbara is really quick to respond. Um, 
he is straight to the point. Uh, he doesn't beat around the bush. He tells you exactly how it is and what you need to fix. Um, it's very helpful feedback. And, um, you know, I thought by me emailing him because I felt like I emailed him quite often, it would be annoying, but um, he was just so helpful in every comment that he gave me. Um, so I would, I would say that um, and, you know, try and stay ahead of the process as much as you can. Okay. Um, I guess to, to finish up, is there any other advice that you'd like to give to folks that are in the early stages of this overall process? Um, I remember when I was listening to other classmates during this process, I was so overwhelmed. <laughs> I was like, what am I getting myself into? I should have just stopped at the 092. But to be honest, it, it's worth it. Um, I would say try not to be overwhelmed. It's uh, Dr. Barber basically breaks down this process so that it's very broken down for you and it's a manageable um, piece of work, I would, I would say. Um, try and stay one week ahead of deadlines so that you can keep emailing him for feedback because he's very good about getting back to you and that way you have a finished product by the deadline and not a mediocre product that you're going to have to still keep working on. So um, I would try and stay ahead of deadlines. That would be my biggest piece of advice. That way you can be done when it's actually finished and not have to go months past. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you much. And uh, I'll just point out for folks that may be watching this from one of the other sections. I'm sure all the other instructors are. So well, I appreciate, you know, Lauren's kind words here about myself. But I think it applies <laughs> to all of the instructors that we have teaching the uh, thesis course. So for those yes, of you absolutely. that have one of the others, um, you know, feel free to take Lauren's advice with those folks as well. So thank you very much, Lauren. I appreciate your time tonight. Anytime.